How can you reliably schedule background jobs in a .NET application? One of the most popular libraries for running background jobs is called Quartz, and in this video we're going to explore some of the more advanced use cases. So why do we need background jobs? A typical use case for moving your flow into a background worker is to offload the primary transaction. So in this case, I have a use case for registering a new user inside of my application. However, I also want to verify the user's email. So I'm creating an email verification token, then I'm persisting everything into the database. And if all of this succeeds, I'm going to generate an email verification link and then use the Fluent Email Library to send the verification email. And this is a good example of something that you can offload into the background using a background job. So let me show you how to set up Quartz and create your first background job. We're going to install a new NuGet package and I'm going to search for Quartz. The library that I'm going to install will be Quartz Extensions Hosting because it contains some extension methods that will make this easier to run in a .NET application and I'm also going to install Quartz Serialization JSON, which is going to allow us to store our job data using the Newtonsoft JSON package. And one more thing that you should consider when it comes to running background jobs is having visibility into how they actually execute. And one of the ways that you can achieve this is through robust logging, but you can also use open telemetry. And there is a pre-release package called Open Telemetry Instrumentation Quartz that allows you to instrument your Quartz background job. So I'm going to also install this NuGet package. At the time of recording this video, this package is still in pre-release, but we can use it nonetheless. So now what do we need to do to enable Quartz inside of our application? I'm going to head over to my program file and right after I'm configuring OpenTelemetry, which is here, I will add some calls to configure Quartz. So I need to start by saying builder services at Quartz, and I'm not going to configure any options for the time being. And I'm also going to configure the Quartz hosted service. This is actually going to start the Quartz scheduler in the background. And here I'm going to set a property on the Quartz hosted service options. And I will say, wait for jobs to complete. This is just going to tell Quartz to gracefully shut down and complete any jobs that are currently running when the application is shutting down. And while I'm here, let's also enable the open telemetry instrumentation. So I'm going to say add Quartz instrumentation. And this method is added by the NuGet package that we just installed. And basically these two lines of code are all we need to get started with Quartz. Now, the next thing we need to do is to create a background job. So let's go ahead and move the work that we are performing here into a separate class. I'm going to add a new class inside of the infrastructure folder in the user feature folder. And I will call this the send verification email job. I will make this internal and sealed. I'm going to need the fluent email service to be able to send the email. And then how do you implement a background job with Quartz? Well, all you do is just implement the iJob interface, which exposes one method called execute. And this is where you're going to place your background work. Now, let me copy the code that I have here and let's just move it into the execute method. And then we'll figure out how we can solve the compile warnings. So first I'm going to make this method async. And then we need to somehow get the verification link as well as the email where we are going to send the verification link. Now Quartz has a distinct way of how you can pass in data to your background jobs. And you can access the job execution context and then you can access the job detail to get the job data map. Another approach is accessing the trigger which also contains a job data map. And this is just a dictionary of key value pairs that represent the data that you passed in to your background job. Now, it's a best practice to use the merged job data property. So let me go ahead and store this in a variable. Let's call this the job data. And then what we can do is access the job data and call the get string method. Of course, we will need to pass in a key for the actual string that we are fetching. And let's say that we add a string called verification token. Now this might return null, and you probably want to check this value before actually running your logic. Now let me also grab the email. I will say job data get string email. And then I can just use these values to send my email using fluent email. So you can see that it was fairly simple to move this work into a background job. And now the only thing that's left 
is to actually run this background job. So let me show you how we can do this. I will comment out the fluent email call for the time being, and then let me inject another service. So instead of the fluent email service, I'm going to inject the iScheduler factory, which is an abstraction from the Quartz namespace. We can use the scheduler factory to obtain a scheduler instance. So I will say await scheduler factory get scheduler and then we can store the result of this into a variable. So this is going to be our scheduler and the scheduler is what allows us to schedule a background job. Now, of course, we don't have a background job just yet. So let's go ahead and solve this one step at a time. The first thing I'm going to do is to create a new job data map. And remember that this is a dictionary of key value pairs. So my first key and value are going to be the email and I will use the user email as the value. Then I'm going to pass in the verification link and I already have this in a variable. Now, if you're wondering why I'm not also using the verification link factory inside of my background job, this is because it's dependent on the HTTP context. And this only exists inside of the current API request. When I move this into a background service, the HTTP context will be null. And the code that I have running here is going to return a null value, which will cause an exception. So I have to create the verification link ahead of time and pass it as my job data. So now that I have my job data, of course, I'm going to create a job and you can express this using a job detail. There are many helper classes for creating a background job and you can see that Copilot is offering an auto completion here, which I'm going to accept. And we're going to use the job builder create method to instantiate a send verification email job. I'm going to say that we're going to use the job data instance that I just created and pass this to the actual job and then we can just build it. The next thing I need is a trigger and this is the simplest way you can create one. So you can say trigger builder create and then build. Now I'm going to make this more interesting. Let's give our trigger an identity and this is just a unique key identifying this trigger. So let's say trigger send verification email and then I'm going to append the user ID as part of this key. If you want to connect your trigger to a specific job instance, you can do that by passing in the job detail to the for job method. And then we can also configure when we want to run this trigger. We can start it right away, which is what I want to do, but we can also use the start at method to specify a specific date and time when I want to run this. Now, there are also other ways to configure this. I can define a cron schedule if I need finely grained control for how often I want to run my background job. Now, this is useful if you want to do recurring work, I just want to run this once, so I'm going to use the start now method. And finally, I can schedule this by calling the schedule job method and passing in the job and the trigger. So let me start the application and let's try out the current implementation that we have here. So let's send a post request to our API to attempt to register a new user. I'll hit the breakpoint at the start of the register user use case, and I'm not really interested in the business logic here, so I'm just going to hit continue and land on this breakpoint here where I'm creating a verification link. So let's obtain the scheduler, create a job data instance, and here you can see I'm passing in the user's email and the verification link value. Then we're going to create a job detail, a trigger, and schedule the job. Now notice when I hit continue, we do land in the background jobs execute method. But if I go into Postman, you can see that we received the response. So our background work is executing on a separate thread. And here I can fetch the email and the verification link values from the job data and send that using Fluent Email. Now, if I go into the Papercut UI, which is a small Docker container that you can run locally to test out your email sending, I can see the email that I just created. And this contains the verification link that the user will click to verify their email. Now, let's discuss some more advanced scenarios. First of all, we don't necessarily want to create a job and a trigger every time we want to schedule something. Secondly, by default, Quartz will use the in-memory job store, 
which isn't all too reliable. However, Quartz does support many of the most popular databases like SQL Server, Postgres, MySQL, and so on. So I'm going to show you how to enable persistence with Quartz using Postgres. We'll have to start by creating the respective Quartz tables. And you can find the specific SQL scripts for running this migration in the Quartz repository. I'm going to leave the link to this in the description of the video. I slightly altered this script to include a custom schema into all table names and I'm also creating a schema and granting the access to my database user. So if I execute this script, it's going to create my database schema. So let me refresh this. And here is the scheduler schema containing the Quartz tables. The jobs are going to be stored in the job details. You can see some tables for the triggers and a few other tables that Quartz needs to persist your scheduling information. But creating these tables is just part of the equation. We also need to configure this from our code. In the call to add Quartz, I can pass in a delegate to say use persistent store. And here I want to configure the persistence options and on the persistence options, let's say I want to use Postgres. And finally, in this delegate, I can pass in the connection string. I can also configure my table prefix if I want to change it. And this is just a clever way for how you can pass in the custom schema that you want to use with your Quartz tables. So my prefix is going to contain the schema and then the table prefix. You can also pass in the data source name, which is just the name of your database and this is going to be CalConnect in my case. A couple of more things you can configure is if you want to use string properties. So I'm going to set this to true. And I'm also going to say that I want to use the Newtonsoft JSON serializer. So this is how you can enable job persistence inside of your Postgres database. The configuration for any other database is more or less the same. You will just use a different extension method on the persistence options. So there is the SQLite, MySQL, SQL Server, and so on. Now, another thing that I want to do is to actually configure my background job ahead of time. So I'm going to create a constant is going to represent my job name and I'm going to use the name of operator to use the job classes to use the name of my type and back in my program file I can add this job when I'm configuring the quartz options so I will say add job send verification email job and let's go ahead and configure our background job to be stored durably in the database so that we can reuse it and let's also give it an identity which I'm going to pull from the send verification email job name. So now that I'm persisting my job in the database, I can simplify the registration logic that I have here. So I'm going to get rid of the job and we need another way to pass in the job data. And you can do this using the trigger and saying use job data and pass in the job data map. And this is why it's important to use the merged job data map when fetching the data inside of the background job. So now I also need a way to tell the trigger which job it should be targeting and I can use the job name to achieve this. So now I can just schedule a job using the trigger instance and this is going to pick up the job based on the identifier, which is its name, and run the trigger. So let me show you how this works. The application started in the background, but I want to jump into the database to show you the contents of the job details table. You can see I have a row here that represents the send verification email job. It also contains the fully qualified name of the type that should be instantiated when I want to trigger this job. So let's send another request to register a user. And I'm just going to skip to the breakpoint where we are scheduling our background job. Now remember that the job instance already exists in the database. And here I'm just going to create the trigger, tell the trigger to reference our specific job instance and start the scheduler right away. So now if I hit continue, we're going to land on the breakpoint to execute our job instance, but I want to jump into the database one more time. In the simple triggers table, you can now see our trigger instance as a row in the database. Here you can see how many times this trigger was ran. In this case, it's just one run. In the quartz triggers table, there's also the job data that we passed to the trigger serialized as a JSON record, which you can see here. And this is what gets serialized back into a dictionary when we are running our background job. So now I can use the merged job data map to fetch the email, the verification link, 
and send the email to the user. And lastly, I want to jump into Jaeger. And if you are enjoying this video so far, make sure to smash the like button right below and also subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss my future videos. Now, what I want to show you here. Jaeger contains our distributed traces and I first want to look at the user's register trace. So if I go into the latest one here, you can see that it contains a couple of spans. The first two are going to be my queries to the user's table to check if a user exists and to insert a user and the verification token into the database. Now, all of the remaining spans that you see here are actually from Quartz, and this is Quartz persisting the trigger. Now, if I go into the send verification email job trace, here you can see the execution of our background job. And the span here contains the trigger name, the trigger group, if you configure that, and you can see how long it took for the job to execute. So this is how you can properly set up Quartz with database persistence. I hope you got value from this video. If you are looking for a Quartz alternative, then you should check out this video next. Check out my courses to improve your software architecture skills. And until next time, stay awesome.